Hello, Senpai Recap is here. Please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you are always updated with our uploads. The story starts with the Hammer clan, led by Makoto Suwu, known as the Red King, attacked a rival gang in a building. Anakushina uses her red marble on the guy, and since he doesn't know anything, the gang leaves. However, a special task force unit called Scepter 4, headed by Raizi Monikata, also known as Blue King, confronts Makoto and Hamra just at the building's entrance. Both sides power up, ready for battle. At Ashinaka High School, Kyukuri Yukizome wants to give Shiro Asana her vegetables since his lunch doesn't have any. Unfortunately, he is able to give her a slip. Shiro enjoys his lunch somewhere atop some building and loves the peace of this country as a stray white cat joins him in his rest. Back in class, Shiro is tasked with helping out at the cultural festival by running errands for the student council. Because he often forgets his PDA, which is very much needed in this high-tech world and serves as a ticket in and out of school, he uses the old-fashioned key to unlock the back door and slip out of school. A Hamra member spots Shiro, and they immediately go to the ground to find him. Shiro comes into contact with skater boy Masaki Yada, who wastes no time in wanting to kill him. He is cornered by other Hamra members, and at the alley, Kiru Yadagami, the black dog, uses his exceptional sword skills and magic to deflect all the projectiles and make their escape. On a building top, Shiro is grateful for his help, but before he can leave, Kiru points the sword at him. Claiming to be the vassal of the former seventh king, Ikaijin Miwa, he is going to slay the evil king in accordance with his late master's wish. Suddenly, all the video screens in the city are hijacked. It starts playing a clip whereby Shiro coldly kills Tatara Tatsuka, the recorder of this clip. He then claims himself to be the seventh king, the colorless king, and is waiting for someone. Lastly, Munikata has Mikoto sitting nicely behind bars. Shiro proclaims his innocence and Kuru doesn't believe it. Since he serves a kaijin, he will not hand him over to the police. Shiro gives up and is willing to resign to his fate. However, he wants to write a farewell letter to his ill sister in the hospital. He wants Kuru to deliver it to him, but the latter realizes it is a trap and makes up when Shiro escapes with a smoke screen. Kuru leaves the scene to continue his search, but little does he know that Shiro is hiding in a mascot suit nearby. Hamra's second-in-command, Izumo Kusanagi, puts up a bounty with a reward of 10 million yen for any information about this killer in the video. Anna's marbles pinpoint Shiro's possible location. Because Shiro is walking around in the suit, nobody could spot him. Kuru and Yada clash. Oddly, Shiro is seen signaling to be on Kuru's side. Kuru easily defeats Yada and goes to where Shiro is, but is gone by then. Kuru only picks up his school badge on sight. Shiro is back in his dorm, wondering why those people are after him. He rests atop the bed and thinks aloud about the recent hassles he's been facing with the pink cat, who is still with him. To his surprise, he discovers the cat has disappeared with a naked girl in place, right next to him on his bed. Kuru waits outside Ashinaka, and lots of girls think this guy is hot. Kukuri offers to help him out as she guides him to Shiro's dorm. While Shiro has his hands full with this mysterious girl Nico, here comes another trouble. Kuru. He's asking about his sister. Kuru is going to kill him, but Nico stands up to protect him. Then they run through the campus as Nico puts up illusionary obstacles to keep Kuru at bay, but even in the heat of the chase, Shiro can even stop to help other students in trouble. Kuru finally corners Shiro. But because Nico can manipulate space and surroundings, Kuru charges and bangs into a wall. The entire day, the trio keeps chasing each other, and they end up back in Shiro's room, tired and exhausted. Since Nico is hungry, Shiro wants to stop to make breakfast. Because Shiro and Nico sucked at making a decent meal, Kuru got pissed and did the cooking. In a flashback during Munikata and Makoto's clash, Makoto willingly surrenders before the fireworks can start. In the cell, Munikata warns that his Wiseman level is pushing its limit, and if the Sword of Damocles should fall, there will be a repeat of the Kagutsu Crater. In short, he wants Makoto to renounce his throne, or he'll have to watch him and keep him locked up for life. Makoto doesn't think it's such a bad deal to be under his surveillance. He can even use force to restrain him. Too bad he can't since he is busy and breathing the same air with him makes him sick. Munakata's second-in-command, Seria Washima, suggests ways to restrain Makoto, and he will consider some of her methods. 
In the case of Tatsuka's murder, the gun used to kill him was modified so that the mafia could deal with it, and the man and the truck involved in the smuggling are missing. Munikata wants to know everything that happened in this city for the past two weeks until this case is solved. Kusanagi is upset when Yada and Rikio Kanamoto fight and damage his prized bar counter imported from England. After teaching them a lesson, it seems their fight stems from the rumor that Makoto left Hamra for Scepter 4. He reveals they're trying to confine a guy who is a natural disaster waiting to happen. The worst case scenario is that he would be under Monikata's watch at all times. His capture means they could roam freely. Yada goes off to look for Kiru. Shiro and Kiru just finished their breakfast as Kiru explained that those fire guys are out for his head because he killed their clansmen. He also explains about clans, a group of people serving their king. After breakfast, he's going to kill him. Meanwhile, at some warehouse supposedly belonging to the missing gun dealer, a group of guys are ambushed by Monikata. Shiro tries to stall for more time by asking about this king thing. Kiru's late master ordered him to evaluate the man who would be the next king and kill him without hesitation if he was evil. Ikaijin, the previous king, possessed the ability to see the future. A king embodies the natural laws of this world and holds the power to run this country. There are seven clans, and each clan is ruled by a king who rules them. Each clan has its own color and power. His previous master was known as the Golden King and brought economic and technological progress to the country. He describes the Red Clan as violent. Because bonds within a clan are thicker than blood, killing a clan member is a stupid thing to do. Shiro argues the video might be fake, and if he were the murderer, he would have run somewhere far away. He vows to prove his innocence and convinces Kiru about it by asking if his late master ever told him to kill people without making a proper evaluation. Shiro pressed the right button on Kiru's tape recorder, which contains all the wise sayings of his late master. Shiro accompanies Kiru around the campus to prove he is innocent. They can even convince the teacher that he is the new transfer student, including Nico. There are several situations in which Kiru feels like killing him right away because Shiro is frolicking around more than being serious about proving his innocence. Meanwhile, Monikata sees the killer's similarity to Shiro and traces him to Ashinaka. Anna also pinpoints Shiro's position on the island campus. Shiro claims the date and time of December 7th were 11.45 p.m. at the Harasaka building in the West Precinct. The distance made it impossible for him to return to Ashinaka in one hour. He is going to try to prove he is on campus at that time and date. On that day, he was helping out with the cultural festival. Something unforgettable happened. His friend Sauda Mishina confessed being allowed to Kukuri on the clock tower, but was rejected. Kukuri would like to forget about that embarrassing incident, but she couldn't determine if Shiro was one of the many people watching it. Shortly, Ms. Hina wanted to blow the school up with fireworks, but the student council swiftly dealt with him. Thinking the student council might have seen him, Shiro goes to see them, but they too can't assure him and tell him to go ask the photography club since they were taking pictures like mad that time. It was because while everyone was watching the commotion, a prop accidentally got raised by the fire. Despite all the photos, Shiro wasn't in one of them. Shiro gets an idea to get the log of students passing through the academy at that time. Because his name didn't appear on the log, he argues he was on campus at that time since the gate scans and checks all those who enter or leave. However, Kiru remains suspicious. This is made worse when Kukuri comes by to hand him back his PDA. He always forgets it and sneaks out due to that. Further proof is not necessary. Nico jumps for Shiro's protection. But because Shiro puts up a serious expression in protecting her, this reminds Kiru of something similar from his childhood days. He agrees to give him another chance. Shiro remembers that the ceiling of the gym caved in due to a broken sprinkler and the toilet overflowed. Kukuri remembers something like that. She ran away to the gym after Miss Hina's confession and saw Shiro there. Indeed, there is a hole in the ceiling, and to prove Shiro is totally innocent, Kukuri shows her PDA with a timestamp showing he was here. All this could have been solved in the first place instead of going around in a wild goose chase if they told her what's happening. Once this case is solved, Kiru asserts his authority to get the other classmates to finish up the cultural festival preparations. Shiro returns to his dorm, but when he sees a bloodied shirt in his closet, memories of that killing flow through his mind. Yada and Kanemoto are waiting outside Ashinaka, but couldn't get in. 
Kiro continues to push the students to work harder for the school festival. During this, he notices a hole in Kukuri's left sleeve as she is getting out rice crackers for Nico. He goes over to her so that he can sew the hole back together. After a bit of work, Kiro turns to Shiro and scolds him for procrastinating. While not entirely focused, Shiro had been thinking about the recent discovery in his closet. Shiro asks what he should do and is asked to run more errands in the city. Seri receives authorization to launch an investigation into Ashinaka and decides to bring Himori Akiyama and Yujiro Benzai with her. She also has Fushimi join them, despite his initial hesitation. Fushimi asks what they are to do to Shiro once they are there, especially if he resists. Seri states that they will simply take him into custody. She adds that asking whether he will resist is a stupid question. At the school, Yada and Kamamoto run into two male students. They scare them off and manage to steal their PDAS, using them to enter the school. Both walk off, completely unaware that their target just slipped past them through a secret exit beyond the gate. Having used all of the school's fireworks, Shiro needed to purchase more in the city. Seri and her investigation team soon arrive at the school. They enter the facilities and go forward to have a meeting with the principal, where Seri requests that she search through their database so that she can track down Shur. Unfortunately, she does not know his true identity, leading to complications. While Seri is arguing with the principal, a bored Fushimi sneaks out and walks across campus. In the meantime, Yada and Kamamoto begin asking various students about whether they know someone who resembles Tatara Tatsuka's murderer. No one is able to give them a positive answer. Yada, Kamamoto, and even Fushimi make their way to a stone statue in the courtyards. Fushimi heads to the student council's office, drugging Sakura Asama to get inside. Once in, he hacks into the student body database and looks for any matches with Tatsuka's murderer. As soon as he finishes up, Fushimi hears a ruckus outside and checks to see. He finds that Yada and Kamamoto are still asking students about Shiro and smiles wickedly to himself. Fushimi then goes outside to greet his former clansmen. He draws the two's attention to himself. Fushimi concludes that after Anna pinpointed the location of Tatsuka's murderer, Yada and Kamamoto headed to the school, irregardless of what Kusanagi would have told them. He also begins taunting Yada. Yada is tempted to fight, but manages to hold back after a few words from Kamamoto. His patience is short-lived. After Fushimi makes a remark about Makoto, Yada decides to engage. Both clash using a variety of weapons, though mainly their respective auras. During the battle, Yada comments that Fushimi has lost his touch. Fushimi argues that rather, he has grown much stronger since they last met. Both then engage in another range of melee-style attacks at each other. In a brief instance, Fushimi draws out two throwing knives and tosses them at Yada, piercing his right shoulder with one. Kamamoto is surprised to see Fushimi possessing two different auras and tries to help Yada. He is pushed back with more of Fushimi's throwing knives, being told by him and even Yada not to intervene. Yada pulls himself up and shares a brief spat with Fushimi before the two resume their battle. Suddenly, the battle is interrupted by the presence of Seria Washima. She has both clansmen postponed their battles. Yada is hesitant to do so, but after he is reassured of Mikoto's safety within the cells of Scepter 4, he walks away with Kamamoto. The two head to a sports field in the school and rest by the bleachers, where Kamamoto bandages Yada's wound. Kamamoto states that they should go back. Yada agrees, but only after he asks one last person about Shiro. He meets Kukuri and asks her, though she does not seem to recall knowing the white-haired student. Incidentally, Fushimi reports to Seri that while hacking into the school's database, he did not find anyone who matches up to Tatsuka's murderer. As Shiro, Kuru, and Niko eat at a ramen store, Shiro notices the owner has a board with photos of his regular customers. The odd thing is that Shiro is his regular customer, yet there are no photos of him. Awashima is a regular customer at Kusanagi's bar. She relates that she bumped into one of his men the other day. She is concerned that the Red King's Weissman level is at its limits. Kusanagi has confidence in him despite noting that he is bad at self-control and patience. In a flashback eight years ago, Makoto was being stalked by a kid named Tatsuka. One day, they learn he got beaten up and hospitalized. They paid him a visit, and Makoto wants to know who did this to him. He didn't say anything but remained playful, much to Makoto's ire. Tatsuka mentions that he will be the king's vassal and that Makoto will become a real king. 
Back to the present, Shiro calls Kukuri since the memo she handed out is unreadable. Nico is uncomfortable with handphones and runs away. When the call connects, Kukuri doesn't recognize who Shiro is and doesn't know anybody by that name. Kuru wonders if this is an effect of Nico. Shiro wants to call home to make sure somebody recognizes him, but it seems there is no such number. Shiro becomes shocked. There are a few possibilities. He called the wrong number, or something happened, and they changed their number. Kiru thinks there's something wrong with his memory. When they arrive at Shiro's supposed home, it is not there. They're in the middle of a stadium. He begins to question if this is Yashiro Asana in the first place. He may be a murderer after all, and he wonders if Kiru wants to kill him. A flashback to three years ago. Makoto beats up those who annoy him. He didn't like being king, and as pointed out, he seems to attract every type of weird person. Anna is an example. Tatsuka is part of Hamra, and the other clansmen have taken a liking for him. Tatsuka assures Mikoto's powers are not for destruction, but to protect. Fast forward to the night Tatsuka was shot and killed, and Yada and Kuzanagi rushed to his side. He died in Yada's arms, and Yada became very devastated. It would seem like Kuru is unsheathing his sword to kill Shiro, but he whips out his tape recorder and another one of Ikaijin's wise sayings to give up this listless mission and reconcile. Though he doesn't believe in who he is either, that was before he became unable to believe in his identity. He will not listen to Ikaijin's words to give up, nor will he reconcile. What he is trying to say to Shiro is not to give up yet. The stadium is suddenly surrounded by Scepter 4. Awashima wants them to surrender, but Kiru isn't going to do just that. Scepter 4 prepares to draw their swords as Nico suddenly teleports everyone into a busy street to take Shiro and run. However, this is just an illusion. Awashima stands in their path. The Sword of Damocles appears. Harold Monokata into the scene. With his powers, he dispels the illusion and identifies Nico as the source. He reveals she is a strain, and by projecting her powers within a perimeter with herself at the center, she can interfere with and manipulate the senses and perceptions of those around her. Shiro wants to surrender, but it's no go for Kiru. He will hold them down while they escape. They clash, but Monikata is clearly superior. He is waltzing through Kiru's attacks. Once Monikata pins Kiru down, he says Shiro may not be powerful, but is a wild card who could tip the balance of power between kings. He believes he will replace Ikaijin as the new colorless king. Kiru mentions that he will not let anyone lay their hands on Shiro till he reaches his verdict, and since he still hasn't come to that, Munikata concludes that this may be Shiro's ploy to stay neutral. Playing neither good nor bad, he gets to keep Kiru as his bodyguard. With Nico around him, it's not hard. He may be deceiving them all and making puppets of his scheme. Shiro's return surprises everyone. He can't let his friend die. He reveals he has been lying all along and activates his Sword of Damocles. That distraction was enough for Kiru to break free and make his escape. In an alley, it is learned that this was just an illusion put up by Nico. Kiru puts the pieces together based on what Munikata said about Nico's power. In addition to manipulating, she can create false memories of those around her. Like making people who met for the first time believe they are old friends. That's why Kukuri couldn't recognize Shiro now. Shiro wants Nico to correct this amnesia thing now. Even if he turns out to be an evil king and is killed on the spot, he is tired of running. He wants to settle this right here. Otherwise, they can't move on. Regardless of who he was in the past, his present self must take responsibility. Nico begins her ritual to have Shiro look back into his memories. Nico, as a cat, was scared of almost anything and did anything to survive. Till she met Shiro's kindness. The memories first began as we saw Shiro falling from the sky and crashing into the roof of the school's gym. That's when they first met. Kukuri happened to enter since she heard a loud crash. Nico manipulates their memories as though they've known each other. However, Shiro wants to know the memories before that. Nico is reluctant because she fears he will disappear. He assures me he won't. Several seconds before his free fall, Shiro sees himself clinging to the edge of the blimp and someone kicking him off. Shiro returns to the perimeter of his school. Even though his past was faked, he knows the time spent with everyone recently was real. So it's good enough to say he has returned home. Despite this, there are lots of uncertainties he needs to clear up. Munikata and Awashima discuss their next move. Their men report some sort of contact left behind by Kiru. 
a piece of paper that indicates 1400. Thinking it is a time indicator, they wait for 2 p.m. to pass, and on the dot, Munikata receives a call from Shiro. He thinks the man on the blimp is also connected to the murder. However, he won't turn himself in and will only do so at the right price. If they can bring that man down to the ground so that he can question him, Shiro will surrender himself. Munikata was initially unwilling to accept his terms because he knew his friends would come and bail him out. However, he accepts it and announces he will detain that man on the blimp, Adolf K. Weissman, the first and silver king. During that talk, Fushimi and his team had already been dispatched to trace the call. Just when they thought Shiro was making a call from a truck, they got it. A cheap trick was used. A handphone calls a handphone. Munakata dispatches his biggest operation yet to take Adolf into custody. They will give him the option to surrender first. Otherwise, they will storm in and command Himmelreich by force. Awashima wants Munakata's reasoning for taking such action. He has observed Himmelreich's flying pattern over the skies. Its path is more or less the same, with just deviations from the weather. However, it abruptly changed its route immediately after a certain incident, Tatsuka's murder. Scepter 4 prepares to head out via helicopter. Shiro's team is waiting at the airfield base to knock out a unit to take control of their helicopter. As they approach Himmelreich, Adolf is anticipating things to get even livelier. Shiro wants to know about the Silver King. Kuru, though he has never met him, heard from Ikaijin that he is special, like the Gold King, who is the Second King. Gold King exists only because of Silver King. While the Gold King rules the ground, the Silver King rules the skies. They plan how they want to snatch the Silver King once they get on board. It will not be easy since other Scepter 4 members are going to board it too. Nico starts pressing the buttons to speed up, which causes the helicopter to fly dangerously close to Himmelreich. When it is close enough, Adolf sets off explosives that send the blimp exploding in flames. Back in Germany in 1945, Adolf demonstrated to others his rodent nature under the influence of Slate. It has his mouse commanding the other mice under its control at the end of the maze, indicating the increased power it will have and how it will affect humans. Lieutenant Kokujoji thought it would bring an army of superhumans, but Adolf says it is for joy. The mini maze got destroyed by the power instead. During a raid on Germany, the bombings killed Adolf's sister and fellow scientist Claudia. He was saved because of his sword of Damocles. A few months later, Adolf takes Slate with him and leaves Germany for Himmelreich. Kokujoji thought he was just running away. In present time, Adolf's body is retrieved from Himmelreich, while there are none at the copter who crashed into it. Awashima learns the actual pilots for this helicopter were knocked out at the hangar. Kyukuri and her friends are cleaning up after the festival and want to enlist that guy's help, but they can't remember who he is. They somehow enter Shiro's room, and though they do not recognize this place, they have a feeling that someone is occupying it. Monikata visits the Golden King, Dekaku Kokujauji, to confirm Adolf's body, which is resting nicely in the glass coffin. Monikata believes Adolf may be faking his death because the Silver King was the one who started it all. His physical state never changes, and he is thus also called the Immortal King. For a man who retains his youth and vigor and suddenly dies half a century later. He wants to examine his body, but it looks like the Golden King won't allow it. Makoto is sitting pretty nicely in prison when a mysterious caller mocks him. There's this fox spirit coming out of the phone, claiming to be Tatsuka's murderer. He tries to provoke Makoto by saying that he will kill more of his comrades so that Tatsuka won't feel lonely, but Makoto plays it cool. The spirit then taunts that he will take Anna for himself and see an opening. He possesses Makoto, but his plan backfires when he sees a fierce, flaming lion and becomes scared. This allows Makoto to trace the call back to a dorm at Ashinaka, who was in Yashiro's old room, followed by Makoto's flame which ignites the phone causing an explosion. With that, Makoto breaks out of his cuffs in prison. Nothing can stop him, not even the heavy security walls and doors or the might of Scepter 4. Awashima can't handle his flames that burn everything down, and Fushimi tries to stop this, but his hand is even trembling, and he can't even unsheath his sword. Outside Scepter 4's gate, his comrades of Hamra are waiting for him. Now that he has found his target, they make their way to the island's campus. Scepter 4 can do nothing but watch them walk away. Hamra makes her fiery entry into school. 
They tell them, don't panic, cooperate with us, and we'll leave once we find this killer guy in the video. Ashinaka is now under Hamra's control as the gang goes around sniffing out the killer while Makoto just lies around. As Scepter 4 has surrounded and barricaded the perimeters of Ashinaka, Nico uses her sensory perception so that they can sneak into school. Monokata realizes Mikoto's move on Ashinaka means he is here to apprehend Tatsuka's murderer. But if the culprit is another king, especially the colorless king, it's going to get messy. Each king displays his own unique power, and no one knows that power until he shows it. Thus, the colorless king is unlike other kings because he's like a trickster that agitates the relationships between kings. Since Scepter 4 didn't capture the colorless king, they can only apprehend the red king and risk an all-out war with the red clansmen. Kusanagi tells Yada that he shouldn't get so worked up. Especially now that Fushimi is on the other side. He doesn't blame him since Fushimi was once Yada's partner, though Yada accuses Fushimi of betraying them first. A flashback reveals Yada confronting Fushimi when he was about to leave Hamra for Scepter 4. He is bored of playing gangster and wants to move into something big. To add insult to the clan, he burns his Hamra mark on his shoulder. He provokes Yada by running down Hamra to the point of being ungrateful to Mikoto, who picked him up from the streets. Later, Kusanagi talks to Mikoto about old times and Tatsuka. He never thought he would become a real king. When he became one, his short-fused personality stopped. He became a gun that protected what needed to be protected. He also found it hard at first to believe he had so much fun with people gathered around him. Makoto gets up to settle some business. Makoto goes to meet Munakata. He wants Makoto to relinquish this school peacefully since he is involving innocent high school students' lives. If he does that, he will slay Tatsuka's killer, the man who calls himself the Colorless King, on his behalf the way he wants it. He reminds Makoto that his Sword of Damocles is in bad shape, his Wiseman level is at its limit, and at this rate, it will cause another repeat of the Kagutsu Crater tragedy. Mikoto declines, so Monokata sternly reminds him of the innocent lives involved. His reply is that they take care of their own businesses. Shiro and others return to his room, but are devastated to see it torn apart. Kuru feels that with Mikoto's appearance here, a clan war might take place. Shiro surprises Kuru by saying that they should seek Ikaijin's advice. However, Kuru says that won't be necessary because what they need to do next is obvious. Rescue Kukuri and others. They don't need to rely on Ikaijin's words for that. Scepter 4 is on standby, and when an explosion rocks a part of Ashinaka, Monokata gives the orders to charge in. He lets a Washima take charge. The Hamra guys are ready to rock and roll, as both sides are having their clash. As Fushimi and Yada settle their old score, more explosions rock the place. Monokata saves a Hamra guy from being crushed by a falling block. However, he shows his gratitude by stabbing him. Munikata doesn't seem perturbed and lets the blocks fall on them. Anna leaves her place after seeing a vision and was almost sniped by a Scepter 4 soldier on the roof. Kuru saves Kukuri from an explosion. She doesn't remember Shiro, but he helps her get away. However, Makoto has found them, and he is not going to let them go. Kuru tries to stall him to let them get away, but Mikoto is too powerful. Not even Niko's sensory perception could do the trick because Makoto is in a rage. Kuru continues to fight Makoto until Monokata steps into the picture. With Monokata butting heads with Makoto, it's perfect timing for Shiro's group to escape. Kukuri wants to tend to Shiro's minor injury. She surprises everyone by stabbing him with a glass. Kuru restrains her as we see a fox spirit possessing her. A short flashback reveals the several people the fox spirit possessed, including the Hamra guy who tricked Monokata, Scepter 4, Edolf and his blimp, and Shiro himself. The fox taunts Shiro, saying that he doesn't remember a thing, and that he ran away to live peacefully. He should go to sleep without remembering anything. Shiro is snapped out by Nico's voice. The fox spirit escapes via Kukuri's body. Shiro is in a daze as he starts to remember Adolf's memories from his time in Germany as a scientist with Claudia, right up to her death and his departure from Germany. He suddenly shoots out a bright silver light, which forms into the Sword of Damocles. Then, speaking in German, he tells the rest not to worry about his injury because it is healed, for he is immortal. And his name is Adolf. Shiro can say that he isn't only the Silver King, but also Shiro. A flashback reveals the colorless king possessing Shiro, facing off with Adolf in his blimp. 
Adolf isn't interested in what's going on on the ground, but since the colorless king is, he takes over Adolf's body. It's not like body swapping, as Shiro puts it. Because of his status as a silver king possessing inviolable powers, while the colorless king has the power to affect other kings, the result was that the colorless king snatched his body but failed to take his powers. Since that had nowhere to go, it went into Shiro's body, which the colorless king discarded. His amnesia was the result of the shock, and he wasn't hurt by the free fall. It is clear now who Tatsuka's murderer is, but the colorless king has jumped from many bodies before. Makoto and Monokata continue their battle. Their Sword of Damocles gives a glimmer of hope to their clansmen that they're still alive. Awashima tries to head over to her captain's place, but Shiro and Niko take her with them. Kuru waltzes in between Hamra and Scepter IV's fight. He wants them to stop fighting under the Silver King's orders, but they don't give a damn. Kuru asks if they truly know the goal of their respective king and wants them to put down their sword and await their king's next order. They're not listening. Yada and Fushimi agree with each other for once that Kuru cannot be trusted and fight him. Kuru, Niko, and Awashima appear in the room where Kusanagi and Anna are waiting. Anna confirms that he is not the enemy. Shiro requests their help. Kusanagi receives a call from Kokujauji, who wants to talk to Shiro. It seems they are on friendly terms with each other. Kokujoji notes that all this is his fault, and that he can stop it by putting an end to it, although he knows he won't listen. Shiro knows this is goodbye for him, so Kokujoji wishes him good luck. The plan is to have Hamra and Scepter IV lead the students out of the island campus, but they think the colorless king possesses one of them and escapes. Shiro thinks not, because he is targeting the kings. Suddenly, the colorless king makes an announcement to everyone that they can't escape. He'll have them dance till they die. Shiro drafts Niko as his first clansman and wants her help to use her power to the max. With Niko's illusionary powers, Shiro appears before all the students. They might not remember who he is, but he does. Because they are his friends. He assures them they will not get hurt and to trust and follow his lead to escape. He sends a warning to the colorless king that they will settle their match. Niko tires out after expending so much power, so Shiro leaves her in Awashima and Kusanagi's care before leaving to settle things. The colorless king is still possessing Kyukuri and curses what is happening. However, he still thinks everything will go his way once he has the red and blue king. Mm. Kyukuri's inner self is still fighting as she pleads for help. Makoto and Monokata continue their fight. Yada and Fushimi couldn't beat Kyuru. They remember they were lost kids bumming around in the streets till they chanced upon Makoto. Kusanagi gave them a chance to join them. Yada and Fushimi realize nobody else is left on the island. Both Scepter IV and Hamra have evacuated. Kanemoto takes them both away. Now that everyone has evacuated, Shiro reunites with Kuru. Kuru bows down before him, and as he asks Ikaijin's permission to serve another king, Kuru now swears his loyalty to Shiro. The colorless king is watching Mikoto and Monokata's battle from afar, thinking that one should dispose of the other, in which case he will take over the loser's body and devour the winner. He claims he will then be the most powerful king and go to hell with all the seven kings. Kyukuri is still fighting inside, so it sometimes makes the colorless king lose focus. Shiro and Kyuru confront possessed Kyukuri. There is no one left on the island for the colorless king to possess. Kiru draws his sword, and now that he has confirmed this colorless king is evil, he will not hesitate to slay. The colorless king plays dirty by reverting back to innocent Kyukuri, but Kiru is not swayed. Turning to Shiro for help, Shiro wants Kiru to stop, and in this moment, he lets his guard down. The colorless king jumps out to possess Shiro. However, it is part of Shiro's plan to contain him within his body. Shiro pities him because he has consumed so many personalities that he doesn't know which is his true self. Kuru wanted to scold Shiro for taking such a risky gamble. Now Shiro plans to stop the fight between the Blue King and the Red King. He wants Kuru to take Kyukuri away. He knows he needs to finish this fast since he can't contain the colorless king inside of him for too long. As he makes his way, Shiro reflects on his research and how he thought it would make everyone happy. However, it brought nothing but loneliness. Even though each king has his own followers, the king still walks a solitary path. Yada returns to his Hamra gang, and he is not happy that everyone abandoned Mikoto. Kusanagi knocks some sense into him, saying that he should be ashamed of himself because even Anna is enduring everything. 
Fushimi is back with Scepter 4. Awashima thought he had gone back to his old gang. She notes that Munikata is a man with a big heart because he gave Fushimi an important post despite his past. That's why Fushimi hates such people because they don't care about the petty struggles of people serving under them. Perhaps that is why they are only attracted to other kings. Shiro drops in the middle of the fight. He first pushes Munikata away. Then he wants Makoto to kill him and the colorless king together. Makoto obliges, and the result is a powerful explosion upon contact. There is a crater as a result, but not a huge one that could change the topography. Makoto seems satisfied, but Monikata clearly isn't. Before Makoto's Sword of Damocles could fall on him, Monikata thrust through his chest to disintegrate it. Makoto apologizes that he won't be able to show Anna that beautiful red anymore. Anna senses Makoto's that is how death the video ends. and becomes distraught. If you want me to the continue King's this anime, Weissman level, let has me vanished. know by commenting down Monikata below. Returns to Scepter Thank you for watching, and they cheer and on their next time. Later, Kuru and Nico revisit the mini crater. Nico pulls out Shiro's umbrella from it and becomes very possessive. She is adamant about returning it to Shiro and is in denial that he is gone. Kuru may agree with her in a way because he is supposed to be the immortal king and theirs. Though Hamra is saddened over their king's death, they start chanting their motto. All of their clan's marks start floating in the air. The little red balls of light were the most beautiful red that Anna had ever seen. Kusanagi thanks Mikoto for being the best king they could ask for. Thank you for watching till the end and don't forget to subscribe.